I'm Kevin Shaw, and you're watching the Watercraft Journal. A few days ago, we put up a small video on our Instagram page just joking about the water that collects in the footwells of the modern sea dudes. A lot of people who had no experience with the modern sea dudes really had no idea how deep these footwells are and that the shape of them make it very, very difficult to get all the water out, at least without using a lot of different tools. We suggested a very simple, cheap $11 fuel pump from Harbor Freight to siphon all the water out. Some people suggested that it really wasn't a problem and that we could just take a chamois and brush it all out, or that we could take a leaf blower and blow it out, or some people suggested even a shop vac, and of course the most common was simply raise up the front of the trailer. We're gonna show you just exactly how flawed a lot of these ideas are, or the effort that goes into using these ideas, and show you just how much water these sea dews can fill up with. Now I intentionally left the cover off of our 2021 RXPX 300 overnight because we had a big thunderstorm come in and I wanted to fill up these footwells as much as we could without using the garden hose. Now you can tell I haven't messed with the ski because it's covered head to toe in pollen. That's Tennessee for you, especially in springtime. With the 2018 redesign of the full-size three-seater sea dews and then consequently the 2020 and 2021 redesigns of the GTI and RXPX 300, Sea-Doo redesigned all of their footwells to be a lot deeper, a lot wider, and a lot more convex. That means that you have a deeper slope and more of a heavier pocket to keep your feet inside of. Unfortunately, what this also means is that water can't escape out of the back of the footwell as easily as say a Yamaha FX or a full-size Kawasaki. Just to emphasize how deep these are, we're gonna show you right here. At its deepest point, it's 10 inches deep. And at its widest, it's 13 inches. That's a lot of volume. First, we wanna show just how much water you can fill up inside of just one foot well and calculate the math for you so that you get a really good understanding of how much weight we're talking about that's sitting in this ski. To do that, we're gonna use this electric fuel siphon. It actually works really good with gasoline and with water, and it runs on two D-cell batteries. It's very, very simple. You simply put it in into the deepest point, let the hose hang over, turn the switch, and let it run. As you can see, we're already filling up our third five-gallon bucket. This little pump moves six quarts a minute so we're really making some decent time without making a big mess. Now, this is ideal for someone who might be in a housing tract or a uh, apartment complex where they can't dispose of water as easily. We wanna give you guys a really clean, easy, and really affordable option to get all this water out without making a big mess and upsetting your neighbors. Now, if you've got your own property, you got your own driveway, it's gonna be really easy. You can just dump it out. We're gonna show you how successful a shop vac is doing this and how quickly it can do it versus our little electric pump. All right, here we go. Our footwell is almost completely dry. There's just a little bit left, not enough even for our pump to pull out. But what we've got here is 14 gallons of water just pulled out of one footwell. That's 112 pounds. 112 pounds in each footwell. That's 228 pounds of extra weight sitting on your ski when it's on the trailer. I don't think a lot of people are very inclined to deadlift the front of their trailer with an extra person sitting on top of their ski wanting to dump out the water. So I went ahead and poured all 14 gallons out of our buckets back into the footwell. So one of the suggestions was that we use a shop vac to pull all the water out. So we're gonna do exactly that and we're gonna use my phone with a stopwatch to see how fast my four horsepower Craftsman shop vac can pull all this water out. But first, we don't wanna fill up the bucket. We're gonna take this cap out. We're gonna just let it drain. Get our stopwatch, put it in, and go.
we actually had to let the vacuum drain out before it could start sucking again. We had filled it up so fast and whoops, we forgot to turn off the stopwatch, but that was easily 10 seconds ago. It took a little over a minute for the shop vac to get all 112 pounds of water out and pumped out onto our lawn. So that's pretty impressive for you guys who suggested it and for you guys who want to spend the money on a big horsepower shop vac, that might be the option for you. So two of the biggest suggestions was that we use either a big old sponge or a chamois to help scoop all that water out. So I'm gonna show you how messy and how wet you're gonna get by doing it. First, we'll start with the sponge. And you try to use it like a paddle. So it's de doing a decent job. But we're making quite a mess. And you can use the sponge to soak up the rest of it. It's gonna take you a few tries and you're still gonna have a little bit of water left. So hopefully you're not wearing long pants or shoes and socks because you're gonna be all wet. All right, for our last experiment, we've refilled our foot wells all the way back up to the very top, right where they're about to splash over, just like we found it. And we're gonna go to all you guys and say, go ahead and tilt that trailer and dump all the water out. We're gonna show you how tough it is to do that. Now, let's be fair. We got ourselves a full-size sea -Doo. We've got 228 pounds of extra water in it, but we're sitting on a lightweight aluminum trailer. I'm a young, good-looking guy who can certainly deadlift this, right? Well, let's see how easy it is. So as you can see, even though we tilted it at over 30 degrees, we still got quite a bit of water in here. So let's get the leaf blower out and let's see how successful we are at getting all that water out with the leaf blower. So as you can see, the leaf blower was possibly one of the worst suggestions, given that we have completely soaked our ski, we've soaked ourselves, we've soaked our cameraman, and if you have just washed the ski, if it was full of dirty water or soapy water, you have blown all of that all over your ski. So the leaf blower, not a great idea. For the easiest use, for the least amount of mess, you're gonna wanna use either our electric siphon pump, the shop vac, and you want to follow up with a sponge or with a chamois to get the last little bit of water out of the footwell for the least amount of mess. So obviously all of this has to pertain to the modern sea -Doos. The older sea -Doos don't really have this problem. The Yamahas with their footwell drains definitely don't have this problem. And even the Kawasaki's don't have this issue nearly as much as these guys do. Even with the trailer hooked up to the truck, we even found that zipping around the road we're gonna have a little bit of water left in the footwells that you just gotta get out. So until sea -Doo comes up with a footwell drain, we're just gonna to have to take care of it this old way. One final option that came to us late in our testing were our friends from Australia who provided us what they call the Suckomatic. I'm not joking. Well, the Suckomatic is actually a really neat 3D printed piece that came to us and it uses no batteries all it needs is your regular garden hose. Now, because we live in the States, we don't have the same kind of fittings that they do in Australia. So you're gonna have to go to either a garden supply store or even your local Walmart to find a female fitting that'll attach to your regular hose. We got this one for a few dollars, screws right on. So how it works is this 3D printed part simply attaches right inside, you lock it in, and you run your garden hose. 
as you run your garden hose, the water will come down here, make a 180 and run out through here. But in the process creates a vacuum here on this end. There are some attachments that attach to the end of it to act as a nozzle if you need to get into some tight spaces. But we're gonna show you how this works just by plopping it in here. First, you just step it in and you turn on your garden hose. With our hose on, we're creating a little bit of suction, but you're gonna hear it start to pull really hard in just a second as it begins to siphon. There it goes. It's drawn all the air out of the system and now it's beginning to pull. We're gonna see a real steady stream of water pouring out of this hose. And you simply give it a few minutes and it'll pull out all the water that's in your foot wells. As much water pressure as you're running through the hose, it's equal to the siphoning pressure that's pulling water out of our foot well. You can see that we're already halfway down. Now, the big concern, of course, is in areas like California, Arizona, where water is a little bit scarce, you really feel like you're wasting a lot of water using this. But for you guys in Florida, or if you're at the launch ramp, where water isn't necessarily an issue, this is a really good option to have maybe in your uh, truck or your, your trailer toolbox. But again, this is a very fast process. It's very affordable. Doesn't require any batteries. Don't need to plug in anything. You don't need an outside generator. You really don't need anything other than just a hose with some water pressure. And we're siphoning out the last little bit of it. Make some slurpy sounds. And just for fun, let's get an attachment out. And we'll get it right in the middle here. And just like a straw, we'll pull out the last little bit. I'm Kevin Shaw and you've been watching the Watercraft Journal. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. It's gonna definitely help us grow the channel. And if you want more awesome jet ski content, make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the six videos that we publish every week. Additionally, we publish new articles at www.watercraftjournal.com every single day, Monday through Friday, entirely subscription free to you.